Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees, and you guys asked for it and I delivered. We did Indian mangoes growing in Florida part one with Alex from Tropical Acres Farms, and today is part two of this video. Now, I just tasted some of these mangoes today, some of these Indian mangoes, and they are out of this world. So I highly encourage you to contact Tropical Acres Farms and order some of these mangoes. And thank you all for your comments on part one of this video. I will put a link to part one below this video in the description if you missed it. But this is part two. Alex has so many. He might have more. We might even have a part three to this video. And if you know of an Indian variety that you want that isn't in this video or you want to check Alex's website, Tropical Acres Farms, I'll put the link below. And look at the list and see if they have those. Uh, but... If you've had the opportunity to taste any of these mangoes mentioned, you are truly blessed because they are absolutely amazing. And I'm so glad I learned so much in the first video. And I learned just as much in this video, and you will as well. So please share this video with others. And here we go. This is part two to Indian mangoes that are growing in Florida. Okay, here we are uh, for part two of our... Indian mangoes that are growing here in South Florida. Here's Alex from Tropical Acres Farms. Okay, so today we're talking about Indian mangoes again, varieties of mangoes specifically from the country of India. So the tree behind me here is a variety from India, from Southern India specifically, that's quite popular in Southern India, or at least some of the Southern Indian states, specifically Andhra Pradesh and Telangana states. Uh, this is called Imam Pasan, sometimes known as Himan Pasan, Hima, uh, Himayudin, or Himayat. Uh, it has a few different names. And so this mango is what we would call an Indian West Indian flavor, has a or kind of a unique component to it that I compare to a couple of other Indian mangoes, including one that we discussed in the last video, the Jahangir. So this mango has a light colored flesh. The Imam Pasan almost looks white sometimes when you cut it open, but it has a very, very strong perfume aroma to it and a flavor that has notes of uh, spice, including things like anise and, um, you know, some might say licorice or whatever, but uh, still with the resins that you would find in a typical uh, West Indian flavored mango. So this variety actually flowers pretty well here in South Florida. It, um, it, it is from Southern India, so it doesn't require as much cold weather for it to achieve a bloom. And a lot of the times, a mom Pasan will flower multiple times here. It's very normal for it. So this tree will sometimes flower as many as three times. It wouldn't surprise me, Paul, if you find some on this tree some branches that are possibly flowering now. Now you can see this is from a late bloom here. We're right now entering the middle part of June. This tree normally fruits heavier than this, but if we come to this side, we can see what it looks like. It's a decent sized mango. It does not develop any pink or red blush here. It will turn yellow sometimes as it approaches maturity, but will sometimes just stay green. And there's some fruit up in the canopy here. Now, there is a little quirk about this variety. Um, well, a few. But one is that it was introduced here to Florida under two different names. One was Imam Passan, but the other was Alampur Banishan. And from what we understand, there is an Alampur Banishan mango in India, in southern India. But we don't believe this is it. And so in the Florida nursery trade nowadays, you see trees that are labeled as Alampur Banishan. That is a mom Pasand that you are growing if you have an Alampur Banishan tree in Florida. Okay, so on our website, we discussed this a little bit on the page for the variety. But if you have an Alampur Banishan, just know that you have in Florida, okay, you have an Imam Pasan. In India, there are not many good photographs of the real Alampur Banishan, but there are a few. Um, and you can see the distinction in terms of the way the fruit looks. But Imam Pasan has kind of uh, distinctive leaves and has a kind of spreading growth habit. You can see this tree was planted in 2014, 
And Paul, we can come over here for perspective. You can see how much larger the Alfonso mango, which appeared in the first video, is compared to this tree. We've never had to do a hard prune on this tree in the years that we've had it. And at this point, this tree is approaching or is around 10 years of age. This is pretty good for a tree in South Florida's climate uh, to have not received a major prune. We've only had to shape it with tip pruning um, to keep it from getting too leggy, but um, a very manageable canopy. Uh, Would that be considered a dwarf or a semi-dwarf? Well, uh, that's subjective, but at a minimum, it's a slower growing tree or a smaller tree. Some might claim it's a dwarf, um, you know, whatever. Uh, either way, this is a tree that you can fit in a limited amount of space um, with just a minimal amount of pruning. Uh, so that's a great thing for people in South Florida that have, you know, zero lot line yards or maybe only just a patio or something like that and they want to grow an Indian mango, this is something to consider. However, I mentioned that it had some quirks. Um, one of them is that the fruit likes to crack open on the tree sometimes. Well, not sometimes, a lot of the times here in Florida, especially after we've received a lot of rain. This is a little different from splitting, okay? A lot of the times the fruit will develop cracks, vis visible fissures in it that will heal over. Sometimes they get bugs and insects in them and then you don't want them anymore. But this one, um, if, it, if it cracks open, a lot of the times the fruit is still good. It's just cosmetically not saleable. And for that reason, we haven't planted too many of these, even though they flower pretty well in Florida. Uh, I have one up here that is starting to crack, so I can demonstrate what it looks like. See, this fruit has a crack across the top of it. Can you see it, Paul? Okay, and my finger is there. Very common trait is a mom Passan here in Florida, unfortunately. Um, but it wouldn't stop me from growing it necessarily, especially if I was a mango collector, which I guess I am, but like if I was a home growing mango collector that has room for you know a decent number of trees, um, this can fruit reliably here in South Florida. And we'll look at a smaller one uh, that we actually got by mistake that has that um, second crop on it developing now. And it's a, it's a slightly younger tree, but it kind of displays the, uh, the small growth habit on it, if you will, uh, even better. Um, so you can kind of envision it in a small yard. But anyway, um, so that, like I said, this mango is very sought after in southern India. Many people there are familiar with it. So here we are in front of our other Imam Hassan tree. We have two Imam Hassan trees here on the farm. We did a video in front of the larger and older of the two, but this one was planted in the year 2017 and it was supposed to be a different mango. It turned out to be a mislabeled Imam Hassan, but we were happy because we love Imam Hassan and it does well here. So remember what I said, how easily this tree flowers in warmer climates. Here we are, it's, we're getting close to the middle part of June, and this tree still has some flowers coming out of it. How about that? It also has fruit from secondary bloom that occurred in the spring. So you see these developing mangoes are not going to be ready until probably later August. And it has a few fruit from the first crop. So. Is that common for this tree? It's not unusual, it's done it before. So, but you can see how small this tree is despite at this point being around seven years of age. Um, you know, very manageable canopy and much smaller than some of the trees nearby that are considerably more aggressive. So um, anyway, uh, just uh, another Imam Passan tree we wanted to show you. And this tree is the same age as the other one? It's younger than the other yeah, one. Okay. This was planted in 2017. Okay. Um, as a, I think, a three-gallon tree. So this tree at this point um, is probably approaching seven years of age or around that amount from the point in time it was grafted. Now, so, do you know what you were going to get and like when did you discover it? was supposed to be Bennett Alfonso. Okay. Um, and it was not Bennett Alfonso. I knew relatively quickly that it wasn't. Uh, of course, we later acquired the real Bennett Alfonso, so it worked out okay. But um, I knew it was an Imam Passan relatively early in the tree's life because Imam Passan fruits very quickly here. Um, and it has kind of distinctive leaves as well. So uh, I initially thought, okay, this probably isn't Bennett Alfonso. It's probably either an ice cream mango or an Imam Passan. Ice cream mango has similar kind of thin leaves like that. So um, anyway, um, but it's another one. Um, we kind of group Imam Passan in flavor uh, 
comparable to ice cream mango or white piri mango or jahangir. They're almost a subgroup of the Indian West Indian flavor group because the, the terpenes they have are shared between those varieties. And um, you can detect the similarity a little different from the, the West Indian flavor you find in the, um, the Bombay or the Ras Puri, which is kind of the quintessential West Indian flavored mango to us, Indian West Indian flavored mango or a Jakarta or something like that. So they know it by name and it's also available in the Florida nursery trade. We make this tree for people. Um, but you can also buy it from other nurseries as well, most likely, under the name Alan Porbanishan. But sometimes you'll see it under the name Imam Hassan, which is its true name. Um, but this is one of those Indian mangoes that performs acceptably in Florida. Not optimally, but acceptably. and has just a wonderful flavor, uh, in our opinion, in the opinion of many of our customers. So that's uh, Imam Hassan. Is there anyone that you know of in the United States that has that other one you were talking about that this is mistaken? The real Alan Poor yeah. Not that I'm aware of, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist here. But um, but it, it's possible that somebody introduced it at some point in time. And finding good pictures from India can be difficult, unfortunately, on the internet. So maybe somebody, one of our viewers in India, can chime in on their opinion on what the real Alan Poor looks like, if there is a relation between it and Imam Pasan or not. So we're not sure, we're, we, we're, it's not very clear, but uh, the one thing we do know is what we call Alan Purbanishan here in Florida is a mom Okay. Yep. Okay, the next variety we're talking about is another Indian variety uh, that is um, a more modern hybrid, not an older variety. This one is called Amrapali. And Amrapali is a hybrid of the Neelam and the Dashiri that makes it a sibling of the Malika mango, which is very common here in Florida and a mango that we talked about in the previous video. So Amrapali was from India's uh, national hybridization program. Uh, I believe it was hybridized in the Delhi area. Um, and I'm not sure what year it was, but I think it was 1971 that it came out. It has since become commercially adopted. So it's one of the new Indian varieties that is being grown by farmers in India on pretty significant scale, especially in West Bengal and, uh, and Calcutta and that area. So, um, but it is uh, uh, being grown in other parts of India as well. And there's a few reasons it's become well adapted. Number one is that it's a slower growing dwarf like tree. And in Florida, it's the same story. So what we have here behind us is actually a top work tree. This used to be a Davis Hayden mango. We decided we didn't need Davis Hayden anymore because it was susceptible to bacterial spot and just wasn't that great of a mango. So we top worked it into two varieties. One of them was Amrapali, the other one was Juliet. We've talked on video before about how pairing varieties vigor is important, but sometimes you don't know how two are going to behave on the same stump. Well, the Juliet has vastly outgrown the Amrapali. So down here on this lower part here is our Amrapali but you can see above it is all this Juliet canopy. So what we're going to be doing is we've produced quite a few Amrapali trees already from this. We have some in our nursery, but what we want to do is top work another stump into Amrapali. The Amrapali fruit can be seen here. It is a small mango when it clusters up like this, and it will often bear in clusters. What we found is that if the clusters are thinned out a bit, the fruit will size up much better. But it can make quite a bit of fruit on this limited amount of canopy. Here we staked this cluster here. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight mangoes on it. Okay. Pretty impressive in terms of uh, its ability to make mangoes. So anyway, um, Amrapali has a kind of a unique flavor. Um, it's hard for us to describe this mango, but it is an outstanding mango. Um, it has notes of citrus. It has notes of West Indian flavor. I don't know where to place it, honestly, but all I can tell you is that it's it's a phenomenal flavored fruit. It has kind of a dark orange flesh. It is fiber free, um, does not have a big seed. So you can see why they decided to adapt this commercially in India because um, it's just a terrific tasting mango that clearly wants to fruit well. And so we think this is another great choice for people with limited yard space, or maybe they wanna grow an Indian mango in a container. Um, but we also feel like this mango will appeal to certain people that maybe find 
um, Indian West Indian flavored mangoes a little too strong or pungent. Um, it might, you know, appeal to Westerners a little bit more as much as it will appeal to Indian folks. Um, and so we like that aspect of it. It hasn't been prone to bacterial spot either, which is awesome. So uh, we have produced a number of these trees, like I mentioned, and we're going to make more and we're going to top work another stump. We just got to choose our stump to, to top work into Amrapali so that it has its own space uh, to grow and thrive. And um, I don't know what else I can say about Amrapali um, other than that uh, it's a very promising variety and um, one of those Indian mangoes that certainly seems to like it here in Florida. It tastes very good. Okay, so now we're in front of a mango called Madras. Madras is a mango from southern India um, named after a city that is now more commonly known as Chennai. Uh, that's in the uh, state of Tamil Nadu in uh, southern India. I don't know much about this mango, I have to say. I think it is an older variety, but this is the first year it seems to be holding a fruit to maturity for us. So we obtained uh, this variety some years ago um, from the USDA in Miami. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure when they received this, but I think it was a pretty long time ago, like maybe like a hundred years ago or something, they got Madras uh, sent to the United States. Um, but anyway, uh, it has flowered before. It flowered last year. I'm trying to remember when we top worked this, but it was probably sometime around 2018 uh, or 19. I don't recall which year it was, but um, anyway, so we've got a fruit here. We're excited. Um, this variety seems to be liked by scales for some reason. Uh, they're attracted maybe to the aroma of the sap or something like that. But um, we're optimistic that we'll get to try this uh, at some point in the next month or so and see what it's all about. Otherwise, it's the only mango on the whole tree. It did have more fruit, but it dropped a lot of it. Or I think as the tree gets older, remember it is a top work, uh, it will probably set more mangoes. But at least we're encouraged by the fact that it can flower here. So. Um, you know, we'll probably see more fruit from it in the future, but at least we'll get to hopefully try it this year, describe it, tell you a little bit about it, uh, because we haven't been able to find much literature about this variety. Uh, it's been a moderately vigorous top work so far, um, but it's not as tall or as wide as the tree that was here before it quite yet. So it hasn't been, it's, it, it hasn't been extremely aggressive like some of the other varieties here. It's somewhere in between. So we'll monitor this one in the future and we'll let you know after the mango season, you know, at least what this fruit tasted and smelled like and what flavor group we think it belongs to and, and everything like that. So this is called Madras um, from uh, modern uh, Chennai uh, in uh, Tamil Nadu. Okay, so behind me here is San Perry. San Perry is a, uh, another more modern hybrid, uh, not one of these old, old school ones. Uh, this is from the breeding project um, over in uh, Southern Gujarat at uh, the uh, Ag Institute there. And it was, I think, probably developed in the last 30 years or less. Uh, it is a hybrid of the famous Alfonso and the Vang and Polly, which is very common in uh, Andhra Pradesh and, and uh, Talanaga, um, Talangana, sorry, Talangana State. Um, the uh, the Alfonso or the Ratnagiri Alfonso is, um, you know, one of the most well-known mangoes in the world. But for people in um, in Andhra and in Talangana, the uh, Bang and Pali is king. So this is a hybrid of these two amazing mangoes, and they were able to develop something that had better commercial traits than both of them, uh, but it achieved flavor and eating quality that is right up there with those varieties may be superior in some ways in terms of how much bricks content it can get and stuff like that. Um, so San Perry, uh, the name uh, refers to the golden color that this mango can develop and um, it does turn a very nice bright yellow golden color especially at the top of the fruit. Um, it gets a little larger than the Alfonso's do uh, from what we have seen. Now this tree is capable of producing more fruit than it made for us this year. However, initially we were a little pessimistic about its crop because it didn't seem to flower that well. But if we look in the canopy here, it actually did much better than we gave it credit for. It has uh, quite a few fruit in it. Um, up in here, Paul, you can see 
Um, actually, I can spot one that is almost ripe up yeah, in there, yeah. which we need to pick. But the neat thing about this mango, it does have what we would call an Indian Alfonso type flavor. But unlike Alfonso, it does not seem to get spongy tissue or internal breakdown issues, at least nearly as much, if at all. And that's awesome because that's something Alfonso often struggles with the people that are trying to grow it, even in India. So this is um, what they were excited about with this variety, along with its production traits. It seems to flower fine in Florida most years. So um, this is a variety well suited to our climate and soil. Um, the flavor is excellent. I've had bricks in the mid 20s on this. The, that's the uh, sugar content uh, on these fruits before. So really, really sweet. A deep rich flavor um, with lots of spice character to it so you have to like that Indian Alfonso mango flavor if you're going to grow this here but if you do and you desire that this is a terrific alternative to the Alfonso mango in our opinion um, and it's a great alternative to the Bang & Polly as well so if you enjoy Bang & Polly you will probably love this mango too um, but unlike Bang & Polly, it doesn't have as much susceptibility to disease it can fruit through powdery mildew, and it doesn't get that big black uh, anthracnose spot on the top of the fruit as much as the Bang & Polly does, which Bang & Polly gets that a lot here in South Florida. So um, pretty good for our climate, and um, I think this is one that we can certainly recommend to people in, in Florida wanting to grow uh, an Indian variety. Um, the one thing I have a little concern about with it is bacterial black spot. It can, it is probably at least moderately prone to it, so um, not as resistant as like the uh, the Amropoly that we talk about in this video, or um, the um, you know the, the some of the other varieties like Amampasan and, and whatnot. Those um, aren't as prone to that disease as, as the San Perry. But in parts of Florida where bacterial black spot's not too bad. Um, I wouldn't be afraid to plant this. It's got a moderately vigorous growth habit. It's not a dwarf tree, so it's not one of those Indian mangoes that you should try to cram into um, a small space or into a pot necessarily. It's better for somebody that has a more full-size yard, but um, otherwise uh, it's, it's a pretty good performer here in Florida, and I sometimes wish that we had planted more of them. So. Um, you, you actually gave me this last year to taste, and it was one of the best mangoes I've ever had. It's amazing. Yeah. So we get really good feedback from our customers on San Perry. It does make it into our Indian flavored boxes that we ship. So, um, you know, once we have it available, it's just because we don't have multiple trees of it fruiting. It's not one that we have like an abundant supply of. But when we've got some, you know, enough to throw one or two of them in there, we will. So, um, yeah, so that's San Perry. Uh, Another great one for Florida. And the descriptions are all on Alex's website. I'll put the links below uh, to all of these mangoes, but uh, you can go on his website and see a written description of everything he's talking about here. Yes, and we update those descriptions. So like the more we learn about these varieties and how they perform here, um, the more information we can provide uh, about them. And so at least once a year, we'll update those descriptions uh, based on the experience uh, of the latest season and the kind of accumulation of knowledge that we can you know, gather after years and years of growing them here. So along with what we can you know, glean off of uh, any literature that describes their performance and, and their history overseas. So, All right, so behind me here is Rumani. Rumani is a very common commercial mango in southern India. Um, it was introduced to the United States probably at least 40 or 50 years ago, um, I think. And so it's been here a while and it seems to perform fairly well here in South Florida. But over there in Southern India, it's a commercial mainstay, uh, at least in certain states. I don't remember which state it's the most common in, perhaps Andhra Pradesh, but um, it is a kind of uniquely shaped fruit. You can see here, it's kind of shaped like a grapefruit. Uh, very round, not oval shaped. So it's distinctive. It looks like our Cushman mango in South Florida. For those of you who are familiar with some of the older Florida varieties, this is kind of what Cushman looks like. Um, kind of the appearance of a grapefruit. It will turn yellow when it ripens. It doesn't stay green. It turns yellow on the tree here um, and uh, kind of a neat looking mango. 
it has what we would call a classic mango flavor. So unlike some of the other Indian and most of the other Indian mangoes we've been describing, which have spicy resinous flavors, um, you know, Alfonso type flavors, this mango has a classic flavor that I would liken more to our Edward mango here in South Florida. Very similar um, in that respect. So it's like kind of stone fruit forward, not terribly resinous. And so there are a few Indian varieties that are like that. We talked about the Ambika mango, which has a classic mango flavor as well, um, which is, uh, is from India. So there's a few over there um, that, that have that classic undertone. Um, this tree usually flowers very well here. Unfortunately, this year it did not. Um, it's been a kind of an aggressive tree for us, honestly. Uh, it had originally been described as a dwarf tree and it's not, uh, not for us at least, it's very dense. Um, you know, so initially it was kind of compact, but it's grown so rapidly and it loves to flush growth so much that uh, it's been actually a little challenging for us to control. So this isn't a good choice for a small yard. Um, it's vigor would make me think it might do okay in Southern California, uh, where vigorous trees are valued. However, it does flower pretty easily most years, not this year produces very white colored bloom. It doesn't have the, the real strong pinks and reds that you see in some of the other um, Indian varieties when they flower. Uh, this one makes a, almost a creamy colored bloom. From what we understand, when they take this mango from Southern India to some of the Northern Indian states, it doesn't fruit well. And I think it's probably because it makes too many male flowers in response to the colder weather that they experience in Uttar Pradesh and some of the northern states there in India. And here in Florida, what we've noticed is when we get kind of cold winters, it'll flower. On the first bloom, it doesn't set much fruit because it makes too many male flowers, and then it will flower a second time later on, and it makes enough females to set mangoes. So not an impressive crop by this tree standards. I've had years where this had a lot more fruit on it, but it is a good mango, and it is appreciated um, by a lot of our customers who've tried it before. Um, kind of a medium-sized fruit, um, and it was used in India's national breeding program. They have one, I think, that's called A.U. Ramani, for example, that's from that hybridization experiment, um, and a few others that contained Ramani in the cross, so they used it. They liked its commercial traits enough for that, um, but probably on its, as it's, um, as in its natural form, it's probably not a good choice for colder climates because of that uh, male flowering trait under, under cooler temperature conditions. So if you're in California, I, I mean like the growth rate might be adequate, but it might just make too many males and, and just not enough fruit. Who knows, you might try it there and see. Uh, for us, I just don't like the vigor so much, so I probably wouldn't plant another one here. But having one is cool, and we do graft Romani trees for people, of course, that uh, you know have a special attachment to it or whatever. Um, maybe they just wanna collect a mango that looks really cool. Um, so anyway, that's from how old is this tree? This tree was planted in 2014 as a one gallon tree. Wow. Okay, it was a small one gallon. It's like this big. I remember when we planted it, um, and uh, you know, I'm like, man, that's a, like even you know, we planted a lot of one gallons and three gallons and so forth. Um, but this one might have had just like one flush of growth when we had planted it and when it had been grafted, and you know, it took off uh, and it got big. So it's got a pretty thick trunk down there. I don't know if you can show it on the video call, but really dense and high very, very easy. In fact, here is some fruit hiding here. Look at that. I didn't even see these earlier, but these were hiding inside of the canopy there. So, so where are you getting all of these Indian uh, seeds from the trees from? I mean, I this know. came from the USDA. Okay, is um, that where you get so, most of your Indian varieties? Oh, yeah, quite. Uh, I would say m uh, most of them probably. Well, not m um, not all of them, because like some of them have been in the nursery trade for a while here. Like Malika has been in the Florida nursery trade for a long time. So is Alfonso, so is Kesar actually. So those we didn't have to get from the USDA. And when you say you get it from the USDA, explain that process a little, what's that? How do you do that? Okay, so the USDA has a facility, an agricultural research station or an ARS in, um, in Miami-Dade County. Um, it's basically just south of downtown Miami. It's in the Coconut Grove area of, um, or Cutler Ridge, if you will. Uh, and that facility is called Chapman Field. Um, 
it used to be an airfield back in World War One, and then they converted it to a USDA facility after they outgrew their uh, Brickell station. Um, they just got too big and they needed more space. So uh, I think it was in the 1920s they converted uh, Chapman Field into the USDA's ARS. Um, and that ARS is responsible for quite a few tropical fruit crops um, in terms of being a germplasm repository for those crops. Um, the USDA is supposed to keep these around, these different varieties, um, in cultivation and observe their traits and offer them to research institutions and farms that want to trial them out. So um, anytime like a new variety got introduced back in the day, um, a lot of times it was through the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So uh, they have a program whereby uh, growers can obtain budwood through their distribution program and, you know, graft trees with that budwood. And so, um, although I believe this one, I think, uh, actually we got the tree originally from Julian Lara because he had grafted up a batch that he got from USDA. So, but the budwood for this tree came from the USDA, I think. Right. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's where a lot of them, but not all of them. So um, anyway, um, a lot of the more obscure ones, like that, um, the, the Madras that we talked about, um, that had the one mango on it. We got the budwood from directly from the USDA and grafted the top part of that tree with budwood from the USDA. Now, do they give it to the public or only nursery? No, um, they've changed their rules over the years. Uh, so it's not as easy for just anybody to get budwood. Um, you know, you kind of have to be either a research institution or a major grower. Um, but I don't want to speak for them. Um, you know, and we've dealt with different people down there, um, but the gentleman that we've, uh, you know, known for a while at USDA ARS Miami is Mike uh, Winterstein. He's great um, and uh, and very knowledgeable guy, and um, and he's really helped us out in terms of um, you know supplying a lot of this rare stuff. And uh, you know, in turn, we're almost I think he once said we're kind of like a secondary germplasm repository for the USDA in case something ever happens. They got wrecked by Hurricane Andrew in the early 90s. I mean, like, almost completely destroyed. They lost some old stuff when that happened. Um, so if something ever happened to them, you know, we can always supply them with the budwood or even grafted trees of a lot of this unusual or rare stuff. So it's been a good relationship. And, um, you know, it's helped us obtain a lot of odd and hard to find stuff. Mm. So. All right, the variety behind me here is called Gilas. Gilas is a northern Indian mango, not really found in the south, but it is found in some of the northern states, at least in Uttar Pradesh um, and probably Rajasthan and um, some of the other northern states, um, Punjab and whatnot. Um, it has not fruited for us yet. It is a top worked tree. I'm trying to remember what the stump was. But uh, we top worked this over back around 2017 or 18. Um, but it still has not flowered once for us. And that's not surprising because some of our other northern Indian mangoes have yet to produce a mature fruit as well in the same time period. They are from a colder climate. And even in northern India, they're known to be not so precocious. Um, so we're hoping at some point we get a colder winter, not a freezing winter, but a colder winter that triggers this thing to bloom. Now in Northern India, gilas is known as a juice mango or a sucking mango. So this is a mango that's not sliced. It may have fiber, I'm not sure, but we haven't seen it or tried it yet. I just know from literature that it is used uh, for juice and from talking to some customers from UP and whatnot. So we'll see, um, but I can't describe anything about it other than that it, it hasn't fruited for us yet. It has kind of a dense canopy, kind of thick, uh, but not very, aggressive growing. It is undergoing a growth flush right now or completing one, but it has not been super vigorous. So that's a positive thing that I can say about this mango. We'll see, maybe it can flower next year in fruit um, and we'll get to talk a little bit more about it. But maybe somebody from Northern India can chime in about Gilas and what they think of this mango. It's spelled G-I-L-A-S, I think. So. so with your space here, how do you decide which Indian mangoes you want to plant and which ones you don't? Um, 
that's hard to say. We'll try anything, right? Um, at a certain point, though, if something is, you know, too disease prone or just doesn't taste very good or whatever, um, you know, we'll consider top working it out of existence. And um, well, I say, won't say out of existence because the stump is still there, right? It's still the inner stock. Um, we can always change something into something else. So we'll try anything, um, you know, with the thought in mind that eventually, if we don't like its performance, we can. Uh, still use the space and make it valuable uh, with a different kind. So, um, you know, there's a few Indian varieties that aren't so special in terms of flavor, um, but they're worth keeping around because some people have a strong nostalgic attachment to them and they remember them growing up in India. And we'll keep them around for that purpose even if we don't think they're that great. There's another one we'll talk about in the video uh, or maybe in a future video, I don't know, um, that's called Sirvana Rica or Sundari. It's a milder Indian mango. Uh, so I'm not wild about it personally, but there are people uh, from the south of India that just have fond memories of Sirvana Rica, so we keep it around. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been too prone to bacterial spot at least, so like it's got that going for it. But you can usually find some positive trait uh, as a justification for keeping something around here. We have enough space for it. If it was smaller, then there's certain types from India that we would probably not consider growing. So. Okay, behind me here is a mango called Amiri. This is a mango that isn't really well known in India anymore, but back around 1900, it was sent from uh, Maharashtra state, uh, like uh, modern Mumbai to Florida to trial out when the USDA was trialing out anything they could from India to see how it would do in Florida. This was one of the Indian varieties that did so-so in Florida. It could fruit here, but they found it a little disease prone, a little prone to anthracnose specifically. This has fruited for us. It fruited for us for the first time last year, but it flowered for the first time several years before that. We planted this tree as a one gallon, um, one or three gallon, 2017, I believe, was a one gallon. And um, it has, uh, it didn't, you know, it, 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 it has kind of like uh, long inner nodes. So it is a moderately to vigorous tree, moderately vigorous to vigorous. So not a dwarf, uh, produces kind of oblong shaped fruit. We have photographs of it on our website if you want to see what it looks like. We took some pictures of it when it fruited last year. Very nice uh, Indian, West Indian flavor. Not as strong as something like a Bombay, but not mild like uh, a Neelum. It's somewhere in between. Uh, I would say it probably uh, is a little similar to the Step Mango uh, in flavor. So uh, I liked it, was impressed. It has nice physical appearance and nice size. So we think, based on the literature that we've read that was published by the USDA and some of the early plant um, explorers in Miami back in the early 20th century that this can do well in the long run. We just have to be a little patient with this tree. Um, we can control anthracnose very easily. We usually don't have too much of a problem with anthracnose here in our coastal zone of Palm Beach County. If you took this inland, I think it would have too much uh, issues with anthracnose. So if you're in Loxhatchee, Wellington, Southwest Ranches, Orlando, this isn't an Indian variety I would consider. I think it's more for the southeast coastal zone and maybe the southwest coast. If you're over in Pine Island, Boquilio, or uh, Fort Myers area, you might think about trialing this out there if you're interested in growing one of these really old school mangoes. I don't know what it's called in India anymore, or if it even exists in India anymore. Maybe it's an endangered or extinct cultivar there, but it was called Amiri here. Uh, spelled A-M-E-E-R-I, I guess, um, but there's probably other ways to spell it. It was also introduced to Hawaii, and it fruited there, too. So, um, but, you know, we're still evaluating it, and it's not one that I can leap to recommend yet, uh, even the people in more optimal zones. But we'll see how it does. Kind of like the Borsha, I think this is one that's going to turn out well in the long run, but requires a bit of patience. So, okay. Amiri. Okay, behind me here is a top work tree that has several varieties on it. This was originally a Golden Queen mango tree. We decided we didn't need two of them. We had two, we still have two technically, and we needed something to put the Fernandine mango on. So Fernandine is a mango from Goa. Goa is a small state in southern India. 
um, but a, a kind of a famous state. Um, it's, um, it's well known for its uh, beaches and tourism and stuff like that. And if you're from the United States, the West, if you've ever had lamb vindaloo, lamb vindaloo is a dish that is from Goa, um, Goa, India. So Goa is one of the parts of India that had a lot of Portuguese influence back during colonial times when the Portuguese started to colonize India. Um, Goa was one of their, um, their, their colonized territories there. And uh, this mango's name, Fernandine, sometimes it's called Fernandez or Fernandina, is from that Portuguese influence. So uh, this variety is a smaller fruit here. Well, I, I shouldn't perhaps call it small. It can probably get bigger than this, uh, especially in India, but it gets nice color, okay? Um, and it seems to fruit okay here in South Florida. In fact, it was a Fairchild uh, Curator's Choice mango, I believe, the year that they did mangoes of India in 2015 or so, I wanna say at the Fairchild Mango Festival. So it has received some, um, you know, publishment here in Florida, but not a lot. Um, so we're testing it out. It took a while for us to test it out because the first Fernandine tree we planted in around 2014 was a fake, sadly. So it was a mislabeled tree. It took us a few years to discover that. Um, and then we got rid of the mislabeled tree. We top worked that tree. And then later on, we got the budwood of what we believe is the real Fernandine. Um, I think we got it from the USDA back uh, not too many years ago. So I threw that on this stump because I had to put it somewhere. And uh, we have a few sections of this canopy that have Fernandine on them. Okay. Um, here. And here but we also still have some section of canopy that's golden queen. I would like to get rid of the golden queen after the season to give the Fernandine a better chance to flourish because the golden queen is fairly vigorous and I don't need it, so. Um, now with all these mangoes you're mentioning here today, are they all fiberless or are they kind of mixed? On some of them, I'm not sure. Like okay. Madras, I've never had. Um, Fernandine, I think I had like 12 years ago or 15, so a long time ago. Uh, I don't remember it being fibrous, though. I don't think it's a, a particularly fibrous mango. Most of them are not fibrous, but the juicing ones have some fiber. So we talked about Panchadara Colossa in the first video. It has a little bit of fiber, but not so bad that you can't slice it, I think. Um, but typically, it's consumed as a juice mango. The Gilas uh, from northern India, I presume, probably has fiber from what um, customers from UP have told me. Um, but of course I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know how fibrous it actually is. Some juice mangoes in general are super fibrous, like the East Indian from Jamaica has as much fiber as you'll find in Jamaica. Uh, and turpentine mango uh, is the same way, right? Um, but some juice mangoes aren't so bad when it comes to fiber. They're somewhere in the middle. Um, we have one that we'll talk about uh, at some point, either in this video or another one, called the Peta Rasalu or Peta Rasam. It does have a small amount of fiber, but it's extremely juicy and uh, you know, the fiber wouldn't prevent me from planting it, you know what I mean? So well, most of the Indian mangoes we grow are fiber free if you're concerned about fiber, okay? So, but anyway, this is Fernandine behind me here. Uh, this is the first crop it's bearing for us. So we'll see how it does. We'll see how the fruit ripens, what the quality is like. Um, but Fernandine from Goa State, India. Okay, behind me here is a mango that we planted uh, in 2018. This is a variety called Malda. It is from the eastern part of India, like the, um, the area of uh, West Bengal, that, that section. Um, I think they grow it in uh, Bihar. Um, and um, it's uh, supposedly derived from what they call their locally Langra mango. And I've heard the name Malda Langra before as well. Um, perhaps people from that part of India uh, can uh, chime in in the comments section about what they think of this variety. It has not flowered or fruited for us yet, but I'm optimistic that someday it will. Um, it's not in a good spot. Unfortunately, this is one of the Indian varieties that we grow that we planted um, in the shade of some very large uh, trees nearby, uh, particularly a Philippine tree to our south. So this is not getting the best opportunity to thrive. And one day if we decide that we want to give it a better spot, we might take budwood from it and graft it to a stump elsewhere. But if this is a variety you're interested in, you're from that part of India and you know the Malda mango, we can graft this for you. Just remember, it 
hasn't fruited for us yet comes with that caveat so until it fruits we're not 100 percent sure that it is what it's supposed to be but uh, hopefully someday it's going to flower and we'll get to test it out so uh, not a very big tree at this moment uh, at least it's a little healthier than it used to be and um, we might have to top work a, a different stump or something that's in a more ideal spot to let it flourish next to me here is a mango called peta rasam or peta rasalu this mango is from southern India, especially common in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Um, so there are several Rasalu type mangoes. Rasalu mangoes are juice mangoes. They're consumed for their juice uh, more than they are sliced up and eaten like traditional dessert mangoes are. But they're very sweet, rich and abundant in spice. This has what we would call an Indian West Indian flavor. Um, so. In India, in Andhra Pradesh, they have what's called the Chinna Rasalu, which is, I believe, a smaller mango than this, and also Charuka Rasalu. Um, but this is the Peta Rasalu, and you can see it gets pretty nice size, okay? So this isn't unusual. This tree has fruited for us um, already. This is the second time it's fruited. It's not very big, as you can see. So it flowers pretty willingly here. This was planted in 2018. Um, and it uh, fruited, I guess, last year was the first time it fruited. Um, so uh, it was a small plant when we got it, but uh, it so far is encouraging to see that it wants to fruit pretty easily here. It um, has flowered twice this year. So it has a first crop and a second crop. Uh, very good quality mango, I have to say. It's not terribly fibrous, but it does have some fiber. So if you're the type of person that wants zero, zero fiber in your mango, this isn't for you, but if you can tolerate some and really want that intense, rich, uh, spicy Indian character um, in the flavor of your mango, this is pretty good, and it seems to do okay in South Florida. I was fearful that it might be prone to bacterial spot or something, but it hasn't been. It's not the most beautiful tree in the world, but I mean, it seems to want a fruit here. So, um, Pedarasalu, uh, probably more appealing to somebody that's actually from Southern India, from Andhra Pradesh but we've made quite a few of these in the last year and a half or so, and we will make more. Uh, it is confirmed to be the real Pedrasalu now. Originally, when we started to graft it, we had to warn people that it hadn't fruited for us yet, but uh, now it has, and we're confident that it is what it's supposed to be, and then we're confident that it can fruit here in South Florida and taste great. So um, this one, one of the promising varieties from Southern India, Pedrasalu, or Pedrasalu. Not a tree at all. Wow, that's amazing. No, it, it hasn't been too aggressive. Uh, so it's got kind of what we call an open canopy. So it's not dense. I kind of like that actually, uh, because it allows better airflow. It doesn't hide fruit the way something like that Mani mango does or some of the others do. But uh, I, uh, so far, uh, promising results the last couple of seasons with this. From your experience with the open canopies, do like raccoons and other critters seem to get those mangoes more because they also see it or not necessarily? No, they, I mean, critters for one thing can detect that a mango is ready with their sense of smell much better than we can. And they can sniff out mangoes that you didn't know were there in that dense canopy. So no, I wouldn't say uh, that it's a minus to be growing something with open canopy because the animals are gonna find the fruit easier, not from what I've seen. So, um, and I like the fact that it offers more airflow and sun penetration. That's important for mango in a more humid climate um, where stagnant air can result in a little bit too much uh, disease. So actually, I, I can appreciate, even though the tree doesn't look pretty, um, I like the fact that the canopy is a little open. All right, so this decent sized tree behind me is a top work that has two varieties on it. One is our orange sherbet from South Florida. But the other one is a variety from Southern India known as Servana rica. Okay, Servana rica. Um, is grown on some commercial scale in southern India and so I don't remember which southern Indian states it's common in but I think it's common in Andhra Pradesh. Um, it is also known in northern India under the name Sundari. Okay, not to be confused with Sindri uh, or Sindhu, Sundari is the other name for this variety. It has fruited for us before but it is kind of disease prone. It is prone to powdery mildew disease and it's probably pretty prone to anthracnose. It hasn't had any issues with bacterial spot, but those two are a problem for this variety. And for that reason, we're kind of skeptical of its success here in South Florida. It's fruited for us a couple times, but it is being outgrown by the orange sherbet. 
um, we will possibly eventually top work this to another stump to keep it around. And we have grafted Serrano Rica trees for people before. It is uh, produced uh, on a little bit of a scale in the Florida nursery trade, but not that much. I would describe this as a milder tasting Indian mango. It is not as strong, as intense as some of the other varieties that have been introduced from India. Um, but there are people that are interested in growing Serrano Rica because, or Sundari as it's also called, because they grew up around it. So we do produce a small number of these trees. And if you're interested in getting a Serrano Rica, we can make one for you. It is a relatively pretty fruit, uh, small to medium size. Um, I think we probably have a picture of it on the website if you want to see what it looks like. It's a fiber-free mango, but just kind of a milder Indian West Indian flavor, not as strong. Um, it's uh, something comparable to Neelam, I suppose, if you've ever had a Neelam mango. Um, so uh, a mid-season mango here as well, but a little too disease prone, I think, for uh, Florida yards, in my opinion. So I think there's better Indian varieties to grow here. So you have to have a real nostalgic attachment to Serrano Rica if you want to grow it here, I think. But it's available. The mango behind me here is another top work. This variety is called Prince. It is from northern India, I believe. But it is one of the northern Indian mangoes that seems to fruit a little more enthusiastically here than some of the others from the north. Um, I believe this mango um, was a, uh, uh, one of the varieties that's grown by a gentleman named uh, Kaleem Ula Khan uh, in the Lucknow area, who's like a very famous mango collector in India, very well known and respected. And I believe this is one of the mangoes that he likes over there. This is what I've read in literature, reading about this mango online. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it otherwise in terms of like its distribution in India but it's kind of got a unique flavor. This uh, variety did fruit for us the last couple of years. Um, and uh, it's got, this is what it looks like. It turns yellow, okay? Um, and uh, it had a flavor. I haven't eaten too many, okay? So forgive me if I'm not great at describing it. I'm not sure how exactly to place it, but it had a flavor that was similar to like a cola like Sprite or 7-Up or something like that. And maybe that's not what it's supposed to taste like, okay? But I found the flavor very unique and interesting, and it's similar to another mango that we're growing uh, called the Aslul Mukharar, Mukharar um, which is from that same region of India. Anyway, we're happy with the fact that it wants to flower and fruit here, and it's in a bad spot, actually. It's underneath this giant Edward tree, so the fact that it's fruited multiple times for us in this subpar spot here is a pretty positive and encouraging sign. Um, so we'll see how it does in future seasons, but we've got enough fruit on it this year. You can pan in here, Paul, and see all the clusters of mangoes this thing is making. And I wouldn't say it had a 100% bloom, but it had a full enough bloom that we're clearly going to get quite a few more mangoes than we had on it in the past. And we'll get to give it a more fair evaluation this year and see uh, see how it does. So we'll uh, we'll revisit this and uh, and see how it's uh, how it's tasting and what its internal quality is like after the mango season is over here in 2023. But all the Indian names of all these different mangoes, and this was just called Prince. How Prince, did get yeah, Prince? yeah. I don't know how it got that name. Remember, I don't know a huge amount about this mango, um, but um, you know somebody from India or. or somebody that knows about it or whatever can probably chime in about Maybe it. Maybe one of the princes of India had it in her I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's somewhere somebody knows the answer. But uh, anyway, very unique the first time we tried it. We'll see how it tastes this year. and Maybe we can start to classify it a bit. I hope the internal quality is good and everything. Um, because on some of the Indian mangoes, they can have internal issues here sometimes in our soil. But we'll see how it does. Hasn't been too vigorous, okay? It is a top work stump, but the stump that we top worked it to wasn't that big to begin with, so that needs to be taken into consideration as well when we're evaluating this tree's growth habit. We'll see how it tastes uh, in a month or so. And do a lot of the people in India only know the famous mangoes in their area, or are there people like you in India that know the whole... Oh, well, the whole there's experts in India that know about tons of varieties, okay? Uh, India is an enormous country, obviously, um, you know, has over a billion people living in it. 
uh, you're going to have people of uh, you know all walks of life that have incredible knowledge about mangoes. But I would say most people there uh, are familiar with the varieties, like you said, that are unique to their state. Uh, India is uh, divided up into a number of states. They speak a lot of different languages. I believe more than 30 languages are spoken in the uh, nation of India. So. Um, you know, they have different names for the same mango sometimes. And, um, you know, a lot of people from there are only familiar with a couple varieties, and that's understandable, right? Not everybody is so passionate about mangoes that they're going to learn about all the finer details and obscure varieties and stuff like that. Um, but one of the great things about the diversity of India uh, and collecting these varieties is we can oftentimes find people who are familiar with it, and they're shocked to find that it's growing here in the United States and Florida. So, um, I haven't encountered anybody that's heard of this thing, but like there's certainly a lot of the other ones we've talked about, people have heard of, and they're excited when they learn that they can grow them here in, in the US. Okay, behind me here is a mango with a name that's a little hard for me to pronounce. It's called Aslul Mukarar. Mukarar, I believe is how it's pronounced. Anyway, this is from Northern India, from Uttar Pradesh, UP, um, from the Lucknow area. And, um, I believe it's one of those uh, mangoes that is grown by um, uh, Colleen Khan, uh, who is like a mango guru there in uh, the area of Lucknow and very well respected. Um, anyway, but this variety is an older variety um, and I don't know a whole lot about it um, other than that its name is a reference to uh, poetry recitals. The name Mukhar, Mukharar is something that uh, refers to like poetry recitals uh, from back in the day, I guess. Somebody from India can correct me or whatever, or pronounce it properly. But anyway, this is what the fruit looks like. It's a northern Indian mango that actually seems to fruit pretty well in Florida. Well, I mean, I should say it has fruited well enough for us the last three years for us to say that we're pretty confident it can fruit here. It has not had full blooms and it is an aggressive tree. So this is not a small variety. We did top work this stump. It used to be a lemon zest stump. We put two varieties on this tree. One of them was this, the Ashley Mukarar, and the other one was um, um, one of the research mangoes. And so this one outgrew its stump mate by a long shot and uh, very quickly has kind of a dense canopy, I suppose I'd describe it. Um, and it bears fruit in these pockets because it doesn't have a full bloom at least the last several years. It's flowered progressively better for us, though. And uh, it's kind of a medium-sized mango, but it's unique because when we cut this thing open, it's got a very light-colored, almost white flesh. But what we've observed is if we let it tree ripen, it gets internal breakdown. Um, so it's a mango that most likely has to be picked green here to get the, the quality that you want. But it is one of these varieties from northern India that has a unique flavor that is a little hard to place. It's probably an Indian West Indian flavor, but remember um, some of these mangoes I've had have flavors that I would liken to like 7-Up or Sprite or something like that. Well, this one had a little bit of that, and I'm not sure if it's because it was going a little overripe or whatnot, or if it's just the way this mango kind of tastes. We'll try it this year. Um, picked properly and not tree ripened. It will turn yellow on the tree, but when it tree ripens, it's just not very good and it gets kind of a funky flavor and consistency. Um, but I have faith that we can get some examples of this that tastes like it probably should taste. So we'll get to try this later in the mango season because it does seem to be a mid-season mango here, but clearly not a mango tree for a small yard. This is something for a collector that has a lot of space and who knows whether it's really worth growing or not. If we can get enough good specimens to say otherwise, then we'll, we'll see, but um, Ashlul Mukharar. Okay, behind me here is a mango called Sindhu. This mango has achieved some fame in India and internationally because it was marketed as a mango that was seedless. It's not seedless, but it is an interesting variety nonetheless. This mango is a hybrid between the Alfonso and the Ratna mango. Um, so, um, this variety, I believe, is like a back cross um, of sorts. Like, that means, like, they took a mango that already had the genes of one of the other parents and they crossed it together. 
um, to get some traits that they desired out of it. This tree makes kind of small Alfonso shaped mangoes, if you will, and very much has an Alfonso type flavor. It does turn some orange uh, reddish color. Um, it can fruit very well here. It's been a dwarfish grower, I would say, since we obtained it a while ago. I think it was planted in 2017, but like we got it like some years before that. Um, and uh, it, uh, it, it does not have any fruit on it this year, okay? But you're gonna have to take my word for it. It can fruit well. It fruited well last year and in the years previously. And we have pictures of this tree on our website. Uh, this year it's flushing some, some growth right now, which is probably a good thing. We have had to take a lot of budwood off of this tree the last several years because we've had a lot of orders for Sindhu. So we've kind of abused this small tree for budwood uh, in order to make trees for people, but we are still making Sindhu trees for people. It is also not growing in a very good spot at all. It is growing in kind of the understory of these massive Edward trees. So it's not a great spot. Um, and it, that needs to be taken into consideration. But this tree has fruited for us. It fruited at a young age and impressively so. So this is a variety that can definitely fruit in South Florida and it's a slower growing tree, possibly a dwarfish tree, um, if you will. So yeah, Sindhu mango, it's from India's national breeding program. Um, you know, uh, an intentional hybrid, if you will. Um, not a chance seedling, and it's not an old variety. It's been around probably for like several decades, but not one of these like really old uh, Nizam era mangoes or something like that, some of the other stuff we've talked about. So um, anyway, uh, I think this one's worth trialing out in Florida if you want something that tastes like Alfonso, but fruits more willingly than Alfonso does um, here in South Florida. So, Cindy. Okay. All right, everybody, there it was. That was Alex at Tropical Acres Farms talking about Indian mangoes that grow in South Florida, part two. Remember, part one, the link is below in the description. There might be a part three, we'll see. But the, Alex, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to show us because right now is mango season. I know you're so busy and many of these mangoes, as you saw in the video, are on the tree right now, ready to be in your stomach. You can go to his website, tropicalacresfarms.com, and you can order some of these mangoes right now. He has a box of Indian mangoes that he can send to you, and many of these mangoes are in those boxes. He also has a daily fruit stand you can go to in West Palm Beach, Florida, if you're local, and you can pick up some of these mangoes. So definitely try as many of the mangoes we mentioned in this video, especially if you like the Indian variety of mangoes. All right? For your comments and questions below, if you like this video and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe because I have so many more videos like this. If you have any ideas of new videos you'd like to see, please post them below. And if you have a local farm or a local nursery or just your yard you're growing mangoes and you'd like me to come and film your yard, I'm going to put my, just my contact information below as well. Until then, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.